Hello, this is Dr. Nate Hoffman with G Suite for Healthcare Providers. It is a YouTube channel and is also a Facebook group. If you have interest in following, please do so, and as well as becoming a member of the Facebook group where we share a lot of tips and tricks and people ask all sorts of questions and you can learn all sorts of interesting information about how to make G Suite a viable option for practice management and documentation purposes. Anyway, I wanted to put together a little video to talk a little bit about one of my favorite platforms, Gmail and Powbox. The two of them together are really phenomenal. Uh, Powbox helps to improve the security of your emails, particularly in regards to where they land in a recipient's inbox. So we'll be talking a little bit about th that today, and I kind of wanted to talk more broadly about email in general, right? So why why is it even important to begin with, right? Why do we need or should want to utilize email as healthcare professionals? And then we'll go into some compliance issues. We'll talk about some of the other options that are available out there. I mean, Powbox is not the end-all be-all for email, right? Uh, but then I will offer up a little bit of a discount for Powbox, and I'll describe that at the very end of the video, so stick around for it and I will provide links and all sorts of stuff so that you can take advantage of that. So first of all, why? Right? Why do we want to use email to begin with? The first two big ones I think are branding and marketing, especially in a day and age like now where so many practitioners are pulling away from large entities and they're offering more like a concierge type of service. It's important that you're offering something that's of value, right? And often what that entails is also this increased access to their healthcare provider. And email offers that ability. And that all goes into your branding, right? Branding yourself as a concierge type practitioner who is accessible to their patients and who reaches out and uh, provides a different type of more high value service than, than others. Right, And then also it allows for these regular touches with clients, even if it's not in regards to you know, what they're pre currently being treated for. And that also includes previous clients as well, just reaching out to current previous clients uh, slash patients and providing them with information and regular touches. All that can go into your marketing uh, strategy. And then this last thing I want to talk about is workflow, right? We talk about in other videos how valuable it can be to send out like a patient intake form, for example, and using some of the other technologies, I can put a link here below, uh, it's for form publisher, for example, uh, what that does is it allows you to send out a form to a patient, they click on the link, they fill it out as their intake form, and it populates uh, several documents, including your own evaluation. So it's saving you time in in doing your documentation uh, when you're ready to, to sit down and, and evaluate the patient. So workflows is a big issue as well. Um, so let's get down to compliance a little bit, right? What's your responsibility? First of all, you're responsible for where your email is created, how it's transmitted, and then also where it lands. You're responsible for that. So what a lot of people don't realize is when they purchase Gmail and they sign a BAA, they go, oh yeah, this is HIPAA compliant, this is great. Well, that's all true in part, right? Um, Gmail is compliant at rest, it's compliant during transmission, but not necessarily in a recipient's inbox, right? If the recipient is not using a secure email, then it can it, it wouldn't be considered secure and therefore not compliant. So you do need to, to make that consideration. And, and I'll be talking a little bit about this later on and how Powbox helps to overcome that, that issue. Now, you're not responsible if a patient initiates communication, right? If they initiate a, a communication via email, what they're saying is that's, that's called implied consent. Uh, so that's that's on them, all right? Though I do feel like best practice is to let the patient or client be aware that they may not be communicating in the most secure um, manner and they should be careful about what they communicate via email. 
So th this is something that's thrown around all the time is this word end-to-end -end encryption, right? So what does that really mean? What that means is kind of like the, the first statement that I talked about up at, up at the first. It means that where the email is originated, how it's transmitted, and then where it lands is secure all along the line. But even beyond that, encryption means that information is made unreadable, unreadable right? It, it, it almost, it just looks like random words, a bunch of gobbledygook that you wouldn't know unless you were, you know, had really highly sophisticated decryption type um, software that, that, that would allow you to, you know, hack this kind of stuff. But um, it's very difficult to do and just adds that extra layer of protection to ensure compliance, right? So, End-to-end -end encryption is the gold standard. And so there are a few different options out there for email that will do this for you. Right? Some of them integrate with G Suite and others are standalone products. Uh, for example, Hushmail is one. Uh, that is HIPAA compliant. ProtonMail is one, but I believe that they are GDPR compliant. They may be HIPAA compliant. I'm not 100% sure. I did not see that on their website. Uh, but there's a couple standalone products. What I like about... Um, Having an integrated option, there's one like Virtue, for example, but having an integrated option allows you to keep your branded Gmail account. It's already set up. You don't have to, you know, open up a different platform to use your Gmail. It's all kind of, it's all right there uh, in front of you in, in your, you know, console, your G Suite console. So, uh, so Virtue is an option. My one beef with Virtue is that it requires a lot of clicks. You know, it's you have to open up the email and then you have to say, yeah, I want this to be encrypted. And you have to do a, a, a couple different tasks to make sure that it's that it is encrypted. I think the hard the problem with that is like, what if you forget one time or whatnot? It, it requires extra steps to ensure that that you're um, sending an encrypted email. So to get down to it, ultimately, I mean, I've mentioned this a million different times on, on different videos and whatnot, but my favorite platform is Palbox, hands down. And let me tell you why. It works seamlessly within your, G, within your G Suite. Seamlessly. I mean, you literally don't know that it's working. You send out your emails as normal, and you don't even realize that anything special is going on in the background. And the reason uh, for that is what it does is it, it essentially pings the recipient's email and kind of says, hey, are you secure? Is it okay for this email to land in your inbox? And if their inbox supports encryption, then yeah, it's just going to be sent off, sent off seamlessly. And it'll just land in their, their inbox and they'll be able to open it like any normal email. Now, if Powbox deems that the recipient email is not secure, then what happens is it actually sends the recipient back to a pal back to Palbox, where they enter in a one-time password. They don't have to enter it again for any future communications. It's a one-time thing, and then they, they, uh, they can always go back and view any future messages within Palbox. And from your end, again, you don't notice anything. You know, you just sent off the, you just send off your emails as usual. The only thing that you notice is at the very bottom of your emails is you have this little icon that says that Powbox is encrypted and that it is a high trust CSF certified product, right? So this high trust CSF certified, essentially, they're a third party uh, group that identifies software that's compliant, right? So it just kind of gives you a little bit of extra confidence in the Powbox product. Anyway, so one of the struggles, though, with Powbox is especially in, an, in a day and age when there's a lot of single practitioners or smaller practices, it can be a little costly just for one person because it costs 30 bucks per license. So what I've done is I've I kind of finagle it to where I'll purchase a bunch of licenses at one time and then I'll turn around and be able to offer those as single licenses. Um, I originally started this just as a service to my group, but I found that there is a lot more people who are interested in being able to to do this. So I've I'm kind of opening it up uh, to as many people as would like to, and and therefore also putting it here on the YouTube channel for as many individuals who would like to um, purchase single or two user uh, licenses. But even more than that, because I have control over the pricing, is I can I can offer discounts for three or more also. So whatever you desire. 
Anyway, that said, um, below I'm going to put a link to a Google form where you can fill that out. Uh, fill out your information saying that you want Powbox. You will notice that for this process it'll take a little bit longer. It's not immediate. Um, the reason behind that is because I need to wait until we have enough buyers to be able to purchase the bundle of licenses that I that I get. Anyway, so uh, I hope that helps and feel free to reach out to me with any other questions and I will talk to you guys all later.